going to be talking about an issue today that is actually, um, you know, happening worldwide and with everybody and uh, including myself, you know, because the society we live in is so fast paced and we really need to kind of hone down on our food and our mind and linking them together with our body. So I am a registered dietitian, those of you who are joining us for the first time. Um, and I'm here uh, to talk about some food and nutrition topics. And today we're going to talk about mindful eating. And it really ties in on all the um, topics that we've talked on in the last, I believe, seven weeks, seven or eight weeks um, that I've been with the Disability Foundation of Connectra. And uh, today is a very good way to kind of tie in a lot of the topics that I've covered. So once again, I'm going to share the screen if you can actually allow me to do that on your part. That would be wonderful, Taylor. I'm just going to wait till we can do the sharing. that possible to share my screen? Hello? Okay, well, if we cannot share my screen, um, we are going to maybe wait till we can do this. I just need a um, reply from the Disability Foundation so we can actually go into the webinar. Hello. Anyways, Okay, so we're going to see what we can do with the technical difficulties. Thank you. And um, it is not happening anyhow. Um, We are expressing and some technical difficulties and um, hopefully we can get that resolved as soon as possible. Hi. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh is it your I please share my screen? Hi. There we go. You're there we go. Host now. Yeah, so sorry okay. about that. No worries. Yeah, you can also talk to me during the presentation. I would love to have, you know, conversations during the whole presentation. And um, okay, so let's start because we have um, a little bit of a lag. Okay, so mindful eating. Um, as I said, I want to reintroduce myself. I'm Renee. I am a registered dietitian in Vancouver, and I own a company called TrueNosh, which really focuses on prevention of diabetes, heart disease, and everything I do is more like a mindful process. And I have about 12 products that I create, all um, based on um, having only using fruits and vegetables um, and no added sugars, also gluten-free and plant-based. If you want to email me for any questions, you can email me at info at truenosh.com or um, take a look at my website. There are recipes and blog posts of current nutrition topics. Okay, so um, yeah, I want to kind of hone down on the idea of the mind and body. And because we live in a fast paced world today, there is so much to think about and there's so many types of food choices, which really doesn't help us um, to make decisions. 
people don't really think when they're eating food anymore and um, they eat without thinking and that's something that um, we really need to focus on to change our mind and, and connect it with our body. Eating has become a, mind, a mindless act, which is often done very quickly because we're doing it at our desks, we're doing it on the go, we're driving and eating, we're multitasking, and that does take a lot to kind of overcome. Your brain takes about 20 minutes to realize that you're full because the signal from your brain kind of slowly goes, I mean, from your stomach when it starts filling up, doesn't actually communicate to your brain simultaneously. It needs about 20 minutes to kind of realize that you are eating something and then you're filling up your stomach. And if you're eating too fast, the signal doesn't have time enough to arrive and people end up eating too much. And because that's why um, we're not really mindful when we're eating. So increasing your recognition a physical hunger, like are you actually hungry? And your fullness cues really have to change in order to adapt a healthier lifestyle. And really to distinguish between your emotional and true physical hunger. All right, so why is this important? Well, obesity rates are on the rise. We've been hearing about obesity rates for almost a decade now, and people have really been increasing their body weight and their, their lean fat, lean uh, body mass has been decreasing and their fat mass has been increasing. Um, chronic exposures, like long-term exposure to stress, plays actually a really big role in overeating and therefore causing obesity. Diabetes is one disease that is something that we, I am very um, mindful of. My father passed away from diabetes and that actually puts me in a higher risk category of developing diabetes myself. Heart disease also is the number one leading cause of death uh, in North America. And most people who have or develop heart disease are somewhat overweight and have the um, um, not not don't don't have the ability to eat mindfully, and um, these few diseases cause metabolic disorders and also mental disorders because you know your you're overweight and you know you have obesity you have diabetes you have heart disease it really causes um, you know. Uh, eating disorders, depression, anxiety, and you relate food in a way that doesn't really cause excitement and might cause harm to, to yourself. Um, so yeah, you need to have um, things that shift your attention from um, just not thinking when you're eating, just uh, by putting your cell phone away when you do it or turning off your television. So some symptoms of an unhealthy mindless eating um, are the following. So binge eating means um, eating a large amount of food in a very short amount of time without actually really thinking and if you really do need the amount of food that you eat. Eating past full, so you're ignoring your body telling you that you're full and you're satiated and you're trying to increase the size of your stomach by stuffing your, yourself with the food that's left over on your plate. You can always save that for later. Eating when emotional emotions tell you to eat. So when you are sad or bored and lonely, sometimes people can't differentiate these emotions and they gravitate towards a snack or a food to help them alleviate some of these emotions. And eating alone at random places and times. So eating alone is not a bad thing when you are really focusing on your food, but sometimes these relate to emotions. And randomly, you'll just find a place that you can find food at a, a, a store that you know it's close by and you can just go in and waste some time buying a snack. Eating foods that are emotionally comforting, so foods that are high in sugar and fat, those are really comforting foods and we tend to eat a lot of that without really thinking of how many calories, how much fat, and how much sugar is actually in that food. 
And again, eating while multitasking. So when you're at your desk, you know, you're doing something, you're reading, you don't really think of when, what you're eating and how much food you're putting in your mouth or on that spoon or on that fork. And that's something that we really need to change when we're um, dedicating a time and space to eat and enjoy our food. And then considering a meal at the end of a product. So a lot of people tend to um, celebrate with food and that's not wrong, but um, they celebrate with the wrong types of food, not healthy food. And that's something that can be changed and that can be mindfully changed, right? And then external eating. So it is um, sometimes, you know, we walk around and the environment causes us to think of a certain food and we kind of gravitate to seek out that certain type of food because we smell it or we think about it and then therefore we think we're hungry, but we're actually not. So what is mindful eating? It is um, a way of maintaining an in-the-moment awareness of your food and drink. It is observing well rather than judging how the food makes you feel. And um, your body sends signals about taste, satisfaction, and fullness. So when you do know that you've eaten enough or when you're feeling that you can't eat enough, you should really understand that it is your body telling you that you should stop and you're full and you should be doing something else with the food you've eaten, you're done, and then you can kind of put it away and think of something else to do. How do we eat or how do we adapt this? It is some sort of a meditation, right? So you need to kind of slow down your uh, chewing, um, you know? So when you are chewing slower, you tend to slow down the food that goes down your esophagus and ending up in your stomach. And that slows down the absorption and that actually gives yourself time to have that signal go to your brain. Um, eating slowly and don't rush, okay? Rushing also causes overeating and you don't really know how much you've eaten until you finish the whole bag of chips or whole you know, bowl of rice or pasta. And when you are eliminating distractions, so when you're on your phone scroll, scrolling through you know, social media, or when the TV's on, you don't really focus on the plate that you have in front of you, the bowl in front of you. And I really want you to kind of think about, well, how does that food get to where it is? How is it grown? Like someone actually has to go and plant the seed of a plant that you've um, gotten at the grocery store what kind of colors are on your plate. Those things just kind of get, you know, put into the side and, and not prioritize when you're watching something and you're not focusing on your food. And um, you can also eat in silence or you can eat with others. So eating in silence really allows you to pay attention to the food if you've made. And if you are with a group of people, make sure that they are also eating too. So your conversation can focus on the foods that you're eating. And maybe, you know, um, you can ask you know, your neighbor or your coworkers how they made their food or where they bought it and what kind of ingredients are in it. Those are things that you can contemplate when you are eating with others who are also eating or when you are silently eating without the distractions of the television or um, scrolling um, news or social media on your phone. Focus on how that food makes you feel. So when you're eating a nice crisp piece of salad or nice crisp apple slice, how does that make you feel? Like, does it make you feel like, oh, excited that this apple was like really crisp? Or um, when, this, when you cut into an orange, like, is it juicy? Or the color of it, does it, you know, remind you of things that are, um, you know, that you've done in the past or will do in the future? 
And then also, this is also very important when you're full, like you don't have to eat the rest of the plate. You can always save it for later, which I'm going to show you in my kitchen now, what you can do with some leftovers and ask yourself, you know, people don't tend to, you know, focus on what you need. You have to ask yourself and talk to yourself. Why are you eating this? And are you really hungry when you're eating this? And why, you know, you choose this certain type of food and it is really, is it really good for me in the long run? When you shop, this is also something very, very important. Don't go into the grocery store when you're hungry. Make sure that you know you've eaten a meal or a snack before you go grocery shopping. And that has shown to decrease your uh, shopping habits to, uh, of unhealthy things. And you will gravitate towards things that really um, are good for your body, right? So when you're hungry, that's the last um, thing that you should go to is go grocery shopping. Make sure you go and, you know, satisfy your hunger first and then go into the grocery store. And then when you're making your plate, so after you've cooked your meal, choose a smaller plate. You don't have to fill up that plate or a bowl. You can uh, choose a smaller plate and then your serving sizes will tend to fill up that smaller plate and you don't really need feel the need to fill up a bigger plate. And that's something that I've also adapted to help me from overeating and to really be mindful of the sizes, of the serving sizes of each um, dish that I've created. So these are just some steps and um, those are some pretty helpful steps. And one thing, it is um, about weight loss because you regain control of your eating habits. When you overeat and when you binge eat, that's when you, know, you pack on the calories and there's no way of using all this energy that you've eaten and your body tends to store it as fat. So when you regain control of your eating habits, it can definitely promote weight loss and it can reduce binge eating and help you feel better. You know, now you're not binging, you're not feeling bloated and you're not feeling like you've overeaten and you know, you basically feel a lot better when you can regain control over your eating habits. So we all know, well, we do not all know, but we know that there are so many different types of diets out there. And I, I can't even, you know, I can't even have enough fingers to tell you how many different fad diets that um, don't actually work in the long term. It's because we've drastically changed our lifestyles within like a week or within two days of adapting this type of diet that you see in a magazine or you see on TV or you read a book about it. But the reality is when you change your way of living or lifestyle too drastically, you can't make it sustainable. And the whole thing about sustainable is really doing it every other, I mean, every day, right? Day in, day out, you have to adapt it slowly. Um, around 85% of people with obesity lose weight. They lose a lot of weight, but then return and exceed their initial weight within a few years because their adapted diet is not sustainable and they just go back to their old ways. Binge eating, emotional eating, external eating, and eating in, in response to cravings has definitely been linked to weight gain and regain of your weight after a successful late weight loss. So mindful eating is something that you need to adapt long-term. You can have to ask yourself every day if what you're putting in onto your plate or what you're cooking is really good for your health in the long-term. And if you can do this day in, day out, this is a challenge and everybody needs to work on this on their own or with a partner or with a dietitian or with their healthcare provider. And these are things that, you know, there's a lot of help out there for. And um, also me and my colleagues at, at BC Dietitians, they will also help you if you need any help. Okay. So, I'm, and again, I asked you to choose your health. This is a slide that we come back to almost every 
week. And some ideas, you know, to help you become a healthier person is try to lower your stress levels, right? And some examples of how to do that is meditate, you know, you don't have to go um, and really focus on a whole hour of meditation, maybe five minutes a day, and uh, playing some really soothing music and just think of happy thoughts or think of a, um, a park, you know, and think of the sunshine will really help you. Go for a massage, right? And lowering your caffeine um, intake will also help lower stress levels. Laugh more, so hang out with friends and family, you know, talk to them and exercise, whether it is a walk around your neighborhood, around the park, you know, going um, to a yoga class online, you know, things don't actually have to be high impact exercise. It could be low impact and just movement of your body will actually help you lower your stress levels. Sleep again, about 78 hours of really shut eye, like sleep that is really good for you to lower your stress and become more mindful of the foods that you eat. And again, eating slowly and promotes digestion and promotes the absorption of nutrients and help you eat less. And hydration. So try to always choose water if you can. It benefits your mucosal line of your intestines and promotes good bacteria. So we talked about probiotics and prebiotics last week, right? You can go ahead and review our session last week to get a better understanding of our gut bacteria and our gut microbiome and how water is very important for that. And then mindful eating, this is the whole idea of today's talk and emotional versus physical hunger. Ask yourself every time you eat, are you hungry? Like, is this plate too much for me? Maybe you can save half for later or a quarter for later and see that, you know, after eating a quarter, are you still going to be able to eat that other quarter? Talk to yourself, you know. These cues are often not looked at um, and not put into priority because we don't, we're, we're, we're not putting ourselves first. And that's something that I urge everyone here to try to do. Putting yourself first will allow you to help others because if you don't have the health to do things, then you can't do other things. And increase your awareness of food-related triggers, right? So when you're walking and seeing other people eating, doesn't mean you're hungry. It means that, you know, um, you're excited to do another lap around the park or and then, you know, you can go and eat something. So triggers, you know, everybody has certain types of triggers. We can go into that later. But understanding that what things that you see when you are leading your day-to-day -day life causes um, you to think about a certain type of food or, or, or cause you to be hungry. And mindful eating will give you freedom to choose your response to these triggers. So when you have these triggers, you have to have the freedom to choose whether or not you're succumb to these triggers, right? That's a very powerful way to become more mindful in choosing the types of foods you eat and when you eat. What are the outcomes of mindful eating? So you become more aware of the types of foods you eat, how much you eat, and who you eat with, or if you want to eat with a friend or not. And you really improve self-control. And self-control is the only thing that you can work on with yourself. And, and there's a lot of help around self-control with therapists and dietitians. You can ask for help in, um, you know, 3811, which is um, HealthLink BC. And another outcome is positive emotions. You feel good and you feel better about the food choices and the food portion sizes that you make. So dealing with your impulses effectively, right? So effectively meaning, you know, when you have triggers, you can ask yourself if you're really going to go to buy that chocolate bar or if you're going to wait and cook something healthy for yourself at home. 
And it really puts yourself in charge of your responses instead of all your instincts. And that's something very powerful, as I said, that everyone needs to work on every day. Maintaining your health is not just one pill, not just one food or one type of exercise or one diet, right? Balancing a diet, exercise, and mindful eating are important. That's something that we need to work on day in and day out and it has to be sustainable and it has to be adapted long term. So your whole life, you have to kind of really think about this. And there are going to be a lot of challenges, I'm not going to lie, but there is a lot of help out there and you really need to understand the how your body and your mind works together, right? So some steps you can take, right? So as I said in all of my sessions, prevention is key. You can always call Hellink BC or go to bcdietitians.ca. They have a lot of professionals that can help you. And our last slide, again, this is something that I cannot um, say enough, is not your, your focus on food should not just be one nutrient. It is the whole overall lifestyle that you need to adapt to make the biggest difference in your life. And something that's you know labeled low fat or low in sugar might be high in very various processed foods or refined carbs refined sugar and a lot of sodium. So make sure that you read your food labels and your food nutrition table in the back of every processed food. Just take a little bit of time. Just think of it as time to understand the foods that you buy and what you're putting into your body. And what you're putting into your body is really what makes up you know, your emotions, yourself, and how you present yourself, okay? So now let's go back to my kitchen and we can talk about a few recipes, how to utilize some um, leftover foods and also uh, make, we're gonna make a uh, side dish instead of mashed potatoes, we're going to do some mashed lentils. So here we go, okay. So give me a little bit of time. We're gonna set up my kitchen. I hope everyone can see. Perfect. So I have some leftover rice here, um, and it is a mixed grain rice. And it looks a little bit yellow because I cooked it with some turmeric, and we talked about turmeric a few sessions ago. It's highly anti-inflammatory, right? And it makes food pretty really lovely color, like a yellow color. And we made. Um, Golden milk, right? So I have made golden milk. And we also have a question here. I just saw this. We have Normal Hickey on Facebook. What if you're underweight and really want to put on some weight? My appetite isn't there all the time. Probably from stress as well. So yeah, um, I said stress is something that you need to manage. And um, adapting a... Uh, healthier uh, physical activity routine. So go on a walk when you know that you've been sitting too long. You should, when you go food shopping, you should try to maybe find something that you've never heard of, you've never seen before. Pick it up and go Google a recipe and see if you can make it and see how it tastes, right? So if you're underweight, that's something very, uh, very uh, interesting. A lot of people who are underweight can't put on the calories. Actually, exercising can help you with that. So lifting weights can actually put on lean body mass. So when you are putting on muscle, muscle actually weighs more than fat if you um, put one the same uh, volume, okay? So when you are putting on muscle, your weight gain will actually increase. So um, lifting like water bottles when you're walking around the park or when you're watching TV can also help. And putting in some protein. So what I'm gonna do now um, is actually making a healthy fried rice and we're gonna try to increase more protein and fiber into our rice. And I have some chickpeas here. So they have quite a lot of calories, but they also have protein and fiber that can actually 
increase your lean, help you increase your lean body mass and help you slow down your digestion and really feed your gut bacteria because it's got some fiber in here, right? So which is a prebiotic that we um, learned about. And um, we have some tofu here. So if you are a meat eater, you can throw in some lean chicken breast that's cubed up. Um, and then I'm gonna put in one egg and some garlic and onions and as well as some carrots and some leafy greens. And we're going to also make a mashed uh, lentil. So instead of potatoes, which have uh, a low glycemic index, which is going to be um, absorbed into your body a lot quicker, you can adapt um, making a side dish with lentils instead. And a lot of people are afraid of cooking lentils because they think that lentils take so long to be made. That is actually not true. So I've, what I have is about a cup of lentils here. And these are just dried lentils. You can put any type of lentils in. And I'm going to add a little bit of water, just enough to cover the lentils, okay? And this is just regular water. You can put in chicken stock or veggie stock. And I'm going to add in a little dash of flaxseed oil also. This is a, a lenice oil that you can cook with, um, given to me by Amy, another registered dietitian uh, who owns Libra Nutrition. So now I'm gonna put the lentils on boil in the back and just kind of look at it every five to 10 minutes. I'm gonna stir it around after the water boils. And then after it boils, I'm gonna turn it down into a simmer. So I don't actually need to worry about that until the water boils. And what I'm gonna put in the lentils after it cooks, and it should take about 15 minutes to cook, um, is my nutritional yeast. So I work with a lot of people who uh, adapt a plant-based diet. Nutritional yeast has a really nice cheesy, buttery flavor. And um, that way you don't have to use uh, any uh, saturated fats. So this can um, substitute butter, right? I mean, not that butter is bad, but um, if those of you who are vegan and don't want to eat any um, animal products, Nutritional yeast is a good way to substitute butter and cheese. And I really like to sprinkle it on my popcorn and make um, dressings with it. So nutritional yeast will go in to our mashed lentils after we um, cook them. Okay, so it's on uh, medium high. And now I'm going to talk about how to make an easy fried rice from um, leftover rice and how to increase our protein and, and healthy calories and good fats, right? Um, so I have some tofu here, as I said, you can use lean um, healthy meats like fish or chicken or even lean pork and you're going to cut them into smaller cubes. So I'm just going to use a very firm tofu. Uh, the, the firmness is actually quite important. If you're using really smooth and soft tofu, it would not keep its form when you are frying the rice. So I'm just going to cut them into small cubes. And then I also have a can of chickpeas that I've just uh, rinsed off and um, drained. And then I have some rice here. So the tofu will go in with some vegetables. So um, in a few earlier episodes, I talked about this type of vegetable. It's an Asian vegetable called gai lan or Chinese kale. You can use kale as well. Kale stems are great. So I'm gonna prick off all the leafy greens and we're gonna cut those into shreds. But the um, stems, I'm actually gonna cut them into small dice. So our fried rice is gonna look very, very beautiful with a lot of different colors of the rainbows. And as we're gonna do this, we can, also, maybe find um, 
your own leafy green. A lot of these are available in your grocery store, Asian or not. Kale is a good substitute. Asparagus is also a good substitute for this. Um, and bok choy, right? And Napa cabbage. Cabbage and bok choy actually have a lot of calcium in it. And then we have a small carrot. I washed this carrot um, and I actually haven't peeled it because uh, I cleaned it very well with a vegetable scrub. And the peel is actually has a lot of antioxidants on it. And I like to keep my antioxidants and fiber. So I'm just going to keep the peel and then we're gonna dice the carrot into small dice. I can hear in the back that my lentils are boiling. Okay, so we have green, orange, and white. And then when we are finished cooking with the egg, we'll have some yellow. Oh, and this is just one clove of garlic that I'm going to add into the fried rice. If you don't have garlic, you can use garlic powder. And then I'm just gonna put in um, about a quarter of this um, onion. So I'm just gonna cut the top off. And then that gives me a flat edge. You just chop off about a quarter of this onion. So it's about a quarter cup. And we're also going to dice this small. Okay, so how we're gonna start this off is we're gonna cook the onions first because the onions have a little bit more moisture in them than garlic. And then we're gonna put all the um, chickpeas, the tofu and the raw vegetable in after the onions have turned a little translucent in color. So I have a cast iron pan here and it's on about medium. And once again, a little bit of oil on the bottom, so a little bit means about um, a teaspoon, okay? And I'm gonna let the oil heat up, but now my lentils are boiling. So I'm gonna stir my lentils around and then put a little bit of water into the lentils so it doesn't burn. Okay, so another round of covering the lentils. And then I'm gonna turn it down to simmer, okay? So it just needs to simmer for about 10 minutes. And you almost don't even need a potato masher and the lentils will basically um, mush itself. And um, that's probably easier than mashing potatoes, right? So um, simmer for about 10 minutes and then we're gonna go with the fried rice. And what I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna bring you closer to my stove here so you can see everything that I'm doing in the pan. Okay, so can everybody see my pan? And it is on medium heat right now. And then once the um, oil has warmed up, I'm gonna start by cooking the onions. Oops, I dropped a few tofu, don't worry. Okay, pick those up and throw those away. All right, so the onions have started cooking. The sizzling is a great indicator that I need to stir it around. Okay, so once the onions have become translucent, that was very quick. And then I'm gonna add in my garlic. Just 
stir it around just a little bit. Just get the oil infused with all this nice onion and garlic flavor. And now we're gonna add all the veggies that we cut. And then some chickpeas. And we're just going to wait until the veggies develop a nice golden brown color, so especially the tofu, before adding the um, rice. And making fried rice is actually the best when you have leftover fried rice. Because the rice actually is a little bit harder and actually will uh, fry quite nicely. And then in the meantime, I'm going to chop up the leafy greens into small shreds. to become kind of like leafy green ribbons. And we're gonna put that in a little bit later after our rice gets cooked. Okay. So that looks quite beautiful already. A few more moments. So you see how this um, tofu is quite nice and, and brown. So we kind of want all the different vegetables to adapt a nice golden brown color. It smells already wonderful. I didn't put any salt or pepper in yet because we kind of want to do that at the last minute so we don't over salt our food. And then you can also see the lentils getting cooked really nicely. You can stir it around a little bit. And these both should finish around the same time. Okay, you don't want to overcook the carrots or the greens because I want to keep them quite crunchy. So now I'm going to put in my mixed grain turmeric rice in here. And I'm just going to let it break apart a little bit. You might need to add a little bit of water. It depends on how hard your rice is and if it can break apart easily, then you don't really need any water. So this rice is my um, mixed grain rice that I have here. It's uh, one part white rice, uh, one part brown, sorry, two parts white rice, one part brown rice, one part quinoa, and then a quarter part flax seeds. And that will actually help you um, adapt a healthier rice uh, habit by increasing some fiber and omega-3s in your mixed grain rice. So now the rice has been incorporated well. I don't actually need to add more water because the rice is uh, not too hard. And you can saute 
the rice with your spatula. And then now we're gonna ready to put in the egg, okay? So what I have done here is I created a little hole in my pan for the egg to go in, okay? And I'm gonna put in a little bit of oil in the middle, okay? And then we're gonna crack in the egg right in the middle of the fried rice. And then I'm gonna break the egg apart in the middle of the pan. And it's going to fry its in the middle and be a nice scramble before I incorporate it into the rice. All right, so in the meantime, I'm gonna also stir again my lentils and they look very, very cooked already. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat. Okay, so the rice, I mean the egg and the rice, you see is scrambled nicely. And then now once the egg is scrambled, I'm gonna to toss in all the rice together with it. And we've added the tofu, the chickpea, and the egg to increase the nutrition content of our rice. So there's a lot more fiber and protein. And then at the end, we're gonna throw in a handful of those leafy greens. And then turn off the heat and just fold the vegetables in. So both of the stoves have turned off. And the residual heat should cook the um, shredded leafy greens. And then now is the time to add seasoning. So I have a pretty big pot of rice here. So I'm gonna add one teaspoon of salt to this. This is good for about four people, okay? And then to the red lentils over here, I'm gonna add half of that. So half a teaspoon of salt. And then a little bit of pepper. So this is just some ground pepper on both. And if you like it spicy, go ahead and some, add some chili powder. Okay, and then to the red lentils, I'm gonna add some garlic powder. Okay, that is about one tablespoon worth of garlic powder. And then here we have my nutritional yeast. Again, about one tablespoon of nutritional yeast. And I'm gonna stir this guy around. And then you notice with your spoon, you can already mash the lentils and you don't need too much effort. You don't even need to get out your potato masher to mash the lentils. And this provides a really nice side dish for you know, any type of protein that you are cooking at home. And you can also turn this into a dip when it gets colder, just um, you know, pulse in some um, nice sesame paste and make it into a lentil hummus. I believe I showed you how to do that also in one of my episodes. Okay, and um, once you mash it all and it gets a little bit cooler and some of the liquid has evaporated off, 
you can serve this as a side dish instead of mashed potatoes. And then our fried rice is done. I'm just gonna mix in all the seasoning that we've added in here, the um, salt and pepper. And then again, we can serve this as a side dish. But now we have incorporated so many more yummy things in here. And I hope you guys try to do this with some of your leftover things for add rice at home.